Dear family, we are beginning to be trained in deeper discernment to help those who are coming out of the world, either from drugs or the new age, and are entrenched in relationships with familiar spirits, especially those posing as Jesus, Mary, or the angels. A precious soul has come to us. The Lord has definitely sent her to us to be helped through years of confusion. She did a lot of drugs when she was younger, and it did much to alter her mind and open some pathways for her in the supernatural. And she's very open to that influence. The demons have taken advantage of this and posed as Jesus, all the while throwing her off course. She loves the Lord dearly and is committed to him, but she's gotten very bad guidance through these familiar spirits that appear to be Jesus. You will know if you are influenced by a familiar spirit if your life is in shambles or is way off track, and nothing you do results in success. I'm not talking about trials. Those are useful to raise us up. I'm talking about false starts dead alleys, fear and confusion. If a soul is plagued by those things, you will recognize that the fruit of following a false Jesus is there and bad. Then you will know that you are being deceived and running around in circles without ever finding your true destiny. This young lady is one such person. She is even aware of the spirits around her, a huge mass of demons constantly telling her lies. But many times she thinks that they're angels giving her good advice. She is an extreme case, and that is why I've been led to work with her in the following ways. I was in her place 40 years ago, and I can tell you, it is so painful. So I came to the Lord with a little bit of concern, feeling like, wow, this is a big job, Lord. <laughs> I need the grace. Well, he's training us in many things, and he's helping us learn how to help people get out of confusion, which I had so much of it in my life when I was into the New Age, um, before the Lord apprehended me and revealed who he was and what things weren't what I thought they were. And so I began uh, today, I said, Here I am, Lord. I can do all things through you who strengthens me. It's a sweet bundle, Lord. Please help me. Jesus began, It is a given that when you take on an assignment from me, you will have everything you need to complete it successfully. Besides, this is very good practice for all of you. I want all of you to know how to set the captive free, my way. It takes time and perseverance. And all of that I am imparting to you and to her. We will get this done and she will be set free. I love her deeply and I have suffered much over her captivity. She has also some wonderful gifts I want to raise up. This is a holy project. She's a beautiful soul. When you get beyond the layers of deception, which are many, Claire, there are so very many who are in the same dilemma. And when this is over, she will be able to help them and set them free. Then he suddenly changed the subject because of what I heard from Mike around the world last night, September 20th, which was very concerning. Or at least I thought he was changing the subject. He said, Yes, my love, there are some tragic and fearful times coming on, and they are most opportune to bring souls to me. Many of these things will be so disorienting that they will dislodge souls from the matrix. And by that I mean the monotonous and stagnating, reoccurring circumstances of so many who are stuck in normal day-to-day -day life just to survive. They will be shaken free and off their foundations and will be hungry for answers, eager to find true meaning and stability for their lives. When a soul is completely immersed in me, 
It matters not if they have a roof over their head or food in their stomach. Their anchor in life is me. I am their everything. Even as the Psalms say, the mountains may fall into the sea, but you will still stand because I'm guarding you. He kind of paraphrased that, but I looked it up. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof, we will not fear nor be moved. What he's saying there very much corresponds to some of the things Mike from around the world was saying. This dear soul came from the Los Angeles area, so I'm so glad she's not in harm's way. He continued, The interior man, the soul, will hunger for security, and that is what I have to offer them. There are so many I want to reach, beloved, so many. Working with this young woman is going to bring home the tragedy of those that have been derailed in life. My sweet daughter, I have longed to draw you close to my heart. And here he's speaking to the young lady. Without the interference you've been tormented with, you have come to a place where you will receive the help you need to get through this and come out as a victorious, discerning Christian that cares for others in the depths of delusion and despair. Even as Claire has spoken to you and told you of her own struggles with familiar spirits, and those especially who are disguised as me, but are truly vile demons derailing your life, their entire purpose, which they are trained in, is to derail your destiny. The enemy can see the many gifts and potentials in you, and he will turn you every which way then loose to completely stop you from blossoming into the precious and glorious soul I have made you to be. And that's one of Father's expressions, turn, turn you every which way but loose. I was kind of surprised when the Lord used that. But that's what they'll do, you know. They'll, they'll maneuver themselves and maneuver a soul with so many deceptions that they get topsy-turvy and confused and don't know up from down. They're very clever and very good at it. They've had thousands of years to work on it. So never underestimate the level of deception you can come under because of the influence of the enemy. You are not just one who is lost in this world. He's talking again to the young lady. You are a precious gift to this community and will bring them much joy and blessing. Do not feel like a burden. You are a gift. Always remember that. The enemy will try to make you feel that you're a burden because he wants you out of there. But just ignore his lies and hang in there. Beautiful opportunities are coming for you. That is why Mothers Claire and Elizabeth were so grieved when you said you were leaving. That is not my will for you. This is your blessing place, and the enemy will try everything in the book and some things that are not even written yet to get you out of there. This will work to your advantage when it's your turn to help others. I have great plans for you. Just be a very little girl, observing, never assuming, and allow yourself to be led by my spirit, working through Mother Claire. For the time being, daughter, nothing you receive can be trusted. Do not assume it is me, because many times it is not. Bring everything to Mother for discernment. She sees things you cannot yet see, but someday will be able to see. Put this before every sentence. If it pleases you, Lord, I want to do so-and-so. And then bring it to Mother and get permission. This will save you innumerable mistakes, false starts, heartache, and confusion. By the way, I have determined that you will have a gift and will be known as one who sees through delusion and confusion. Boy, I mean, that's certainly something that happens when you have to go through all of this. And I just want to make a note here. Um, I'm not interested in controlling anyone. I'm only interested in seeing the will of God come true in their lives. 
So the Lord knows this. He knows that I'm not attached. But I'm saying that because we are not a cult. We're trying to help souls reach their destiny and live in it for the Lord, with the Lord. And that's why we send so many out. Once they come here, they get trained, and then they go out to help others and maybe start their own community. That's our whole heartbeat, is to help people find their gift and their destiny and support them in that. Jesus continued, Also cleave to my mother, the Blessed Mother. Ask her to take you under her wing to guide and teach you. Always running it by Mother Claire first. The book that I would recommend for that is The Imitation of Mary. It's beautiful. The Imitation of Mary is all about Jesus and how to please him. It has nothing to do with her. It's wonderful. And that's the hardbound copy by a French author. I can't remember his name, but he's a priest. Because there are two with that name. And it's uh, the hardbound copy from Catholic Press, I think. The demons are not beyond dressing up and pretending to be my mother either. The more unsure you are of your own discernment, the faster progress you will make. If you become stubborn over an issue, it will be a roadblock to your progress in being set free. Try to be supple and ask for an explanation when you do not understand something. If you still do not agree, do it anyway and watch for the fruit. No one is perfect. But if you pray for her and she made a mistake, she'll be grateful to you for your prayers. But if she was right, you'll be grateful for her discernment. Discerning a soul coming from the world is not an easy job. It is very draining. Keep her in prayer always, for I have placed you in her heart, and she will suffer much in setting you free. And for the rest of you on the mountain, I know you've already learned these things. Keep your new member in prayer and President Trump in the forefront of your prayers. That was the end of his message. At the end of the message, I wrote uh, to this young lady, You are never obliged to do anything that is sinful or contrary to your morals and your faith or your conscience. Just make sure that you don't use that as an excuse to get out of doing things. And I'm saying this for the sake of all of us. Obedience is not doing everything blindly. It's committing yourself to obeying after you've discerned that you need to be in a certain place, you want to learn a certain thing, then you have to watch and learn what's being done there. If you were drawn to that place, there's a reason for it. But if anyone ever asks you to do something sinful, you are never required to do that. Anything also that uh, violates your conscience, you're not required to do that. And this is important because I've experienced in the past in Christian churches, people coming in and completely messing with what I know is the Lord's will in my life because they don't understand. It's too different for them to quite grasp. It doesn't fit the norm. It kind of stands out as being different. And that rubs against them because they don't have the discernment to see, oh, I see it is the Lord, and back off. So I'm very careful not to ever transgress someone's conscience because I don't want to lead them astray. God bless you, heart dwellers, and thank you so much for keeping us in your prayers. We are under attack right now, and all of you should know that just before Halloween, a couple months before, the attacks are more severe. The covens are courting favor with um, Satan. The more nasty things they succeed in doing, the more points they get. So be vigilant. And don't forget to do your binding prayer every day and your armor. The Lord bless you, dear ones.